Um, and with the Olympics, um, yeah, yeah, let's talk about the Olympics uh, to finish it off. Um, it's happening this Friday, and there are a lot of reasons why having the Olympics in Tokyo in 2020 or in 2021 were bad. In fact, I don't think there's ever been an Olympics uh, with so many compelling, uh, you know, unrelated but serious compelling reasons to, to cancel and not hold the Olympics. M many, many, many of which I agreed with all, all along. Shintaro Ishihara as a vanity project uh, tried to get the Olympics in 2016. Uh, and then he tried again in 2020, after which he, you know, then left and left the, everyone else to sort of uh, pick up to have to do it. And even back in 2016, like, or, or when they applied for the 2020 um, Olympics, which I think was back around 2012, it was just after the uh, Fukushima mess, um, the uh, idea at the time was, well, you know, shouldn't Japan be focusing on reconstructing the northeast Japan Tohoku from the uh, earthquake? And, you know, there was also a concern that all of the construction money that was going to be spent on the Olympics was all going to be redirected from all the construction companies that were at the time taking government contracts up in Tohoku for more, you know, enticing commercial contracts for the Olympics. And that was exactly what happened. Um, the moment that Japan got the Olympics, a lot of those construction projects just got put on hold in some of them. And look, this is the point as well, that maybe the fact that those that, that reconstruction of Tohoku has not really progressed very much. Some might say, well, then perhaps it was the smarter move because people have not gone back to Tohoku anyway. But you could look at it the other way and say, well, maybe people didn't go back to Tohoku because it wasn't rebuilt. You know, there was nothing there. And that's why that area is all the, and particularly the young people, you know, and people who are working, abandoned the region. And it still has basically just consigned the entire and not just Fukushima, of course, but the whole, all the way up to Miyagi. Um, so there was this thing about national priorities, uh, and, and, and the Olympics seemed like pretty frivolous for, you know, the sort of, uh, you know, the money that was being thrown around really should have been spent on that at the time. Um, then whether there were the other concerns when people started to remember every year at this time of year how absurdly hot and dangerous and how many people die from heat stroke in Tokyo every year around this time, how many school kids die in gymnasiums doing sports this time of year. I've played rugby and it, it's dangerous, you know, to play in the heat at this time of year. It is actually, um, it's crazy. And since so July, I've traveled to Singapore and thought, wow, isn't it nice and cool here, here in the equator compared to Tokyo? Like the weather here is absurd this time of year and it's actually dangerous for athletes. And that was another compelling reason that if you're going to do it in Tokyo, you have to do what they did in 1964 when it was on average three degrees cooler than it is now in Tokyo and do it in October instead. But instead they decided, no, we're going to do it in July because of professional, you know, sports schedules and all that sort of stuff. Um, then you had less legitimate reasons, like you had Korea trolling uh, a little bit, Japan, or for any reason that it could, uh, particularly making a big fuss about Fukushima, um, you know, saying that it might, it might be unsafe for athletes there, and they wanted a Fukushima food banned, uh, just like they had, a, they still have it banned in Korea, even though it's all safety tested and is, a, is, is normally on sale in Japan. Um, and, and started telling everyone, you know, the international community, maybe you should all consider reconsider the Olympics because of Fukushima and Japan sucks, and, you know. And they've been, uh, they also did a campaign against, uh, you know, trying to ban Japanese spectators from bringing rising sun flags to events, which they did by putting up a 16th century anti-Japanese war banner <laughs> all over their dorm, uh, which when they were asked to take it down, they took it down, but said that the IOC promised them that they'll also take down Japanese uh, Asahi flags. Uh, which is just, that was a bit silly. Um, but look, on the other hand, um, you know, then you've got all the other things with, you know, the uh, and then the pandemic. The pandemic, of course, is crazy that Japan is going through right now. Um, uh, cases growing at 100, you know, 1.5 times every week. You know, we're up to uh, over a thousand cases a day right now in Tokyo and increasing and doesn't seem like a good time to be inviting you know, 100,000 people from every country in the world to come. And, and as is inevitably, you know, was going to happen. There are cases now being found not only at the airports, uh, but also in the athletes village. And all the other inevitable things, people not following the rules and, you know, being seen drinking in public and by roads and so on in areas near where the athlete village is. One case today, it sounds like a, an Uzbekistani, maybe not an athlete, an official was uh, now been accused of raping uh, a Japanese volunteer. Uh, someone from Uganda um, running away to, uh, you know, claim, saying that they want to work in Japan. I don't know exactly know what they were thinking, but, um, you know, all these other sorts of things. But when, when right now gatherings of more than five people are uh, like, yeah, be, the government's asking people to refrain from. And yet the IOC had a huge like dinner welcome thing last night with protesters outside that they were ignoring the rules that everyone in Tokyo was following. So there's, there's a lot to bash about the Olympics. 
But here's where I'm at, and uh, this is what I'll close on. Um, it's starting this Friday, and as much as I can point to, and I actually agree, and I've said all along that there have been lots of good, really good reasons not to have the Olympics and to cancel the Olympics, and just to accept it's just not meant to be this time, like the 1940 Olympics, frankly. Um, just move on and go for 2036 instead, or go for 2032, and just, you know, just just let it go this time, frankly. It's just, uh, if it was ever not meant to be, it was definitely this time. Uh, and for lots of, you know, I think Japan could do a great Olympics, but there's just lots of really compelling reasons not to do it this time. And the government's just kind of been very passive and has gone through and done it, kind of ignoring a lot of things, public safety, athlete safety, um, and, and, and people talking about, well, it's really just about the broadcast rights and the money and Japanese government not wanting to pay money back and whatever. And then you've got, of course, Joe Rogan and others talking about how um, all the money that gets spent on the, you know, the Olympics nowadays, you know, spend that shit on infrastructure and so on. And thinking about all the, you know, the billions of dollars that goes into the broadcasting and sponsorships and so on. All of this is true to some extent, but it's happening. And on the one hand, I think so many people are now just so wired to be negative about everything about the Olympics because they just don't want it to happen. That even when you have this, what I think is a very cool art installation in a Yogi Park that you can see from all over Tokyo, I have no idea who that person is, by the way, or why that face is up there. I think it's cool, right? But there are some people who are just now wired to like bash on everything Olympics related. And it's a little bit like, you know, with US bases and stuff like that. Here's where I'm at. Uh, it's happening this Friday, and while I disagree with getting to this point, now that it's happening, uh, all that I hope is that it is a success. I, 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 I'm looking forward to it. I, I think for all the athletes that have made huge sacrifices to come and participate, and by and large, uh, you know, I, I think that the number of cases and so on that are happening are far below what I was expecting we would be seeing so far. Still having some, it's inevitable. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm looking for now that it's going to happen. I, I really hope that the um, uh, the heat stroke situation is managed. Um, but you know what? A lot of people, the organization to set this up, the volunteers, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of Japanese volunteers who have worked so hard with trying to get this all set up to make it work. And it's such a huge undertaking. Now that it's happening, um, I don't think it ref it's not going to reflect well on the government. I, I don't think it pulls them out for all of the, the stupid mistakes that they've made and, and the, the, the misjudgment. I don't think it makes the IOC look any better than FIFA, frankly. Um, they still look like they're sort of corrupt. I mean, thinking about the Salt Lake City Olympics and thinking about, um, you know, they've always been known as a sort of corrupt and uh, awful, you know, bunch of failed politicians and a sporting organization. Uh, no love for the IOC, no love for the politicians that have rammed this through when it was unnecessary. But now that it's happening, lots of love for the athletes that are going to compete and lots of love, frankly, for the, the hundreds of thousands of ordinary people who have really sacrificed, you know, uh, uh, unbelievably to be able to, you know, make this thing happen when everything was against it. And for that, I'm looking forward to watching the opening ceremony. I'm glad it's being held with no spectators. It's a shame, but it's the right call. And, you know, uh, short of cancelling. Um, and I'm really hoping that it's going to be, you know, a huge success. And I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, uh, I really hope it's a, it's a memorable and great Olympics for the athletes that come here for all the trouble and all the, the fact that I've been against having it until now. Now it's happening. Um, yeah, I, I, it, it's like, um, I, I remember, forget the name, there's a US general who talks about, you know, the sort of, uh, the, the, he, he did a quote which stuck with me. He was like, uh, what would you want to say to the US public about the, about its military and all its never-ending wars in Afghanistan and Iraq? And he said, listen, uh, everyone should hate war, but but love, please love your soldiers. And I think it's a little bit like that with the Olympics. I mean, you know, you can hate the uh, you can hate the commercialism and the the politics and everything behind the Olympics, but at the same time, I really hope that that doesn't translate into hating the Olympians, the athletes. Um, love the love the Olympians, and I think it's coming to the point now that okay, I think everybody said their piece. I, some people, I, mean, I think a lot of the people who are going to troll the hardest on this and keep whining on this are just people who don't who aren't interested in sports anyway. They never would have been interested in this. Um, I love these athletes i'm really glad that they're coming here it's a shame that they can't show off tokyo you know at its best because of the circumstances but uh that said uh i, I i'm really uh you know to everyone coming uh, as much as i would have loved to be able to somehow participate and be able to help and you know as much as i, I still hope it's going to be a great experience for everyone that comes here and i, I hope that everyone gets behind it when it starts because uh, that's what it needs now you know um so um Good luck to everyone coming to Japan for the Olympics. I can't wait for it. Let's uh, see what happens this week. I'm sure there's going to be more drama. I mean, it's never failed to produce drama uh, all the time until now. 
uh, including trolling from neighboring nations and all the other problems that are happening. It's happening, and I think we we should look forward to it. I'm looking forward to it, so uh, don't hate the play, hate the game. Well, it's actually the, yeah, yeah, perhaps that's part of it, Aaron. In fact, that's a, yeah, <laughs> it works the other way around. So for me, that's where I'm at with that.